Welcome back, everyone, to the eCore Academy eLearning platform. Today, my name is AJ Raj, back with another geometry video for you all. Today's lesson topic is all about similar polygons. Now, I know it's a bit of a straightforward topic. I've done similarity with um, similarity and congruence with triangles, and I've gone into in-depth with that. But I wanted to show you a bit of an overview and some proportionality sequences, uh, specifically with um, polygons and general polygons. Um, overall, not just specifically triangles, but how it actually correlates with different types of poly polygons and what may be the differences between, say, for example, quadrilaterals, triangles, and other regular polygons with n sides, n number of sides. But before we jump into that, to this lesson, please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below, uh, hit that like button on this video, and turn on post notifications to get notified on any of our channels latest post. Uh, we appreciate all of those, uh, all of those things very greatly. As I was saying, the, uh, the whole entire theme of today's lesson is to discover what are some properties of similarity and how exactly can they be represented. So we're going to be looking at these similarities, um, similarity, identifying similarity and definitions of similarity uh, under the laws of geometry. And of course, we're going to be showing you how to identify them and how to actually represent them with diagrams. So let's jump right into it. Let's look at similarity and congruence. I'm going to be uh, formulating a bit of a uh, contrast and comparison and a contrast uh, between both similarity and congruence. I'm going to be showing you some of their similarities and how exactly they might be different. So represented, representation with figures in, similar, in forms of similarity and congruence. So both similar and congruent shapes have corresponding angles, but congruent shapes have equivalent side lengths and similar shapes have proportional side lengths that correspond as it applies for congruence as well. So as I was saying, there are some major differences between similarity and congruence when it comes to the specifics, when it comes to the specifics of identification. So similar and congruent shapes, they both have uh, equivalent angles, meaning all of their angles must be equivalent and they have to correspond, meaning they have to be in the same relative position. Um, but uh, the thing is that um, similarity doesn't, that lacks, the thing that similarity lacks in comparison to congruence is that they don't have equivalent side lengths. So similar figures cannot have equivalent side lengths as congruent figures must, um, but they both have uh, proportional side lengths, meaning um, all side lengths that correspond to each other have a common ratio. Uh, and that ratio represents their equality, ratio, um, relative equality. And that also corresponds to congruence because your ratio will always be equivalent to one for all side lengths. So that's why it applies for, it applies for congruence as well. And if you're looking at these two figures, these two figures are obviously similar figures. Um, they have, of course, equivalent side, uh, equivalent angles shown by these uh, tick marks, which is a form of similarity representation in diagrams. So as you can see here, these tick marks here, doubles, triples, and then you have a single one, corresponds with the single tick marks, arc, arcs, two, and then three and they, they correspond with each other. Um, they obviously don't have the same side lengths, but since they are similar, they must have proportional. So I'll say here, proportional. And that's very key. And then, of course, you have your congruent figures, which are just the same identical figures in different positions. Same exact congruent uh, side lengths as shown here. And they also have these equivalent angles as shown as well. So they have equivalent angles. So that's congruent shapes here. Congruent shapes, and they are proportional as well. Proportional slash equivalent. Anything that's equivalent is always going to be proportional. And that ratio would be a one-to-one -one ratio. So let's move on. Let's look at proportions, what they are, and how actually they can be represented uh, with our overall similarity postulates as shown. So uh, let's look at the means extremes of proportions. This is where everything is derived from for proportions. Uh, the means extremes formula or the means extremes property uh, can develop new other, uh, other new properties when it comes to developing theses on higher level similarity postulates. So let's look at so the, a proportion, uh, before we get into the means extremes, a proportion is an equation stating that two ratios are equal. So a proportion is basically when you're setting up 
two different values. In this case, it could be two different side lengths or angles uh, in terms of these polygons. And all it does is it shows a relationship, meaning say for example, uh, one figure is you know half the length or half as much um, as another figure or half the length of it on a side length, depending on what it is. Um, you can just represent that by in, in forms of uh, algebra, or you can just use it as a ratio, uh, which is a form of a proportion, but it's just saying what you would have to do to each equation in order to make them equivalent. So in this, in this property that I was saying, you would have to multiply one value by two to get the equivalent. So that's what a proportion does. And proportions are used to make new similar figures based off of their side length. So once you're given the proportion that you need to create a new similar figure off of a given figure, you just multiply it to your side lengths, assuming uh, that all of your angle measures are going to be equivalent since that's a part of similarity. And finally, the reciprocal property. If two ratios are equal, then the reciprocals are equal. So all it's saying here is um, if you're saying, maybe you're saying, um, 5 over 6 is equivalent to 10 over 12. Then all you need to do is prove that if you flip six, uh, 5 over 6, that's that's how you get the reciprocal of a fraction. You're basically flipping the numerator and the denominator. So all that's saying is that 6 fifths is equivalent to 12 tenths, and this is always true. And what I wanted to point out here is that in this equation here, the means extremes uh, form of this proportion, that's the way that you actually convey uh, your ratio, your proportion ratio. Uh, this right here, the 5 on top would be your mean. And so the 12 would be the mean. So basically opposite uh, numbers going diagonally. And then these would be this would be your extreme. And 10 would also be the extreme. So they have certain relationships um, going about. And I'll show you those relationships right now. So let's utilize, oh, sorry, no. Um, I'll be showing them right now on this slide. So if you're looking at this relationship, the reciprocal property is one of the properties of the means extremes. And another property is, of course, cross multiplication. If you're looking at the means and the extremes, if you multiply the means together, which is 5 and 12, and you multiply the extremes, which is 6 and 10, uh, the means multiplied together should equi equal the extreme. So that's 5 times 12 is 60, and 6 times 10 is 60. So that means that uh, 60 equals 60. And that's basically mean times mean. And this is the extreme times extreme. And cross multiplication will always make both sides equivalent if this is postul if this equivalence statement is going to be true. So let's utilize dilations to actually represent similarity. I've already shown you this before, but I want to give this a bit of a more overview with um, dilations and similarity. So let's look at how scale factors, which is the for, uh, which is the actual calculating factor of dilations, um, and how exactly scale factors represent similarity. So similar figures, by the definition, by the laws of geometry, states that the characteristics of figures, a similarity bit is basically the characteristics of figures such that they have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. And what that's saying is uh, for similarity, you must have um, equivalent angles. All corresponding angles must be of the same measure and all side lengths must be uh, correspondingly proportional, meaning the same exact ratio between side lengths. And the scale factor is basic basically the ratio of corresponding side lengths on the image and pre-image. And in this case, your pre-image would be the original figure and your image would be your new figure. And that shows uh, basically your similarity. So if I were to show you a figure uh, as shown here, remember how I said you need ratios in order to uh, proportional. Uh, so proportionality is conveyed through ratios. And of course, you need to have proportionality in your similarity postulate. So if you're looking here in the similarity of these uh, of this triangle, you're trying to create a similar figure of this triangle. Uh, what you're going to, or, or let, let's, let's use a situation here. I'm going to develop these two different triangles here, obviously not of same size. So we're trying to prove whether or not they're similar. So if we look at this triangle here, we'll say that it has a 16, 16, 5 as its side lengths. And then this figure here has 8, 8, and 2.5. Now, if we're given the information that we have all equivalent angles for these triangles, uh, sorry, all corresponding angles for these triangles. 
um, then we can go ahead and do a further examination to see whether or not they're actually going to be similar. So if we look at these side lengths given here, we know that a dilation is utilizing the scale factor to multiply. So what we're going to do is we're going to see this C to this smaller triangle here. And we're going to try and see what scale factor would uh, size up this triangle to make it congruent to the other triangle here, this larger triangle. So if we see that 8 times 2 equals 16 to its relative side length here, 8 times 2 equals 16 here, and 2.5 times 2 equals 5, we know that the scale factor is going to be equivalent to 2. And it's also the ratio of this um, this, these two similar triangles. Sorry about that. All right. So we know that the ratio, so scale factor, equals two. And we also know that the ratio of similarity is also going to be equivalent, another way of saying the scale factor. So it's also going to be equivalent to two. And that's going to be going from this triangle to this triangle. So you have to always show that going from the starting, the pre-image here to the image here. So let's look at similarity identification to um, basically close out this video here. So uh, we, after we've identified how exactly we're going to be calculating similarity, we need to actually show it to um, uh, represent it. We have to give it identification and we have to utilize our identification rules. So we're going to be naming similar polygons. So the polygon similarity postulate states that two polygons are similar if and only if corresponding, I'm going to underline this, corresponding um, angles are congruent and all corresponding sides are proportional. So since we know that, and that's basically the polygon similarity postulate, general similarity postulate that I've already stated before, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize this corresponding theme of this postulate here. We're going to be utilizing utilizing it in order to develop similar figures or name similar figures. So if we're given two figures here, um, I'll use squares or rectangles in this case. Because remember, um, it's impossible to draw a square without constructions, uh, without your tools given. So um, let's say that this has, this is a square on A, B, C, and D. And we're given that these side lengths are 6, 6, 3, and 3. And then, of course, we have another rectangle here. Make this a bit smaller so that it, it's a bit of a drastic difference between size to represent similarity. I'm going to name this EFGH. And if we're given that these side lengths are 3, 3, 1.5, and 1.5 here. Uh, what we're asked to do is formulate a, um, a similarity postulate, uh, similarity, uh, basically a similarity identification rule. And the way that we're going to do that is I've already shown you how to do this with triangles, so I'm going to go through this, through this fairly quickly. We know that these are um, going to be both similar figures because they have equivalent angle measures and all corresponding sides, they all have a um, scale factor of two because 3 to 6 is 2, 3 to 6 is 2, 1.5 to 3 is 2, and 1.5 to 3 is 2. Uh, so now that we've identified that, we need to show uh, how exactly we can write this in word form so that we can actually recreate that same similarity postulate on a new drawing without actually looking at the, looking at the original drawing. The way that we're going to do that is, of course, develop a similarity, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a similarity identification statement. So if we look here, uh, we can see that uh, they're in corresponding relative position. So we can say that side A corresponds to E. So we know that A, C, D, B is going to be similar to E, G, F, H. And if you look at it, um, A, C is going to be similar to E, G. C, D is going to be similar to G, F. And A, B is going to be similar to um, EH. And that's the same relationship that you have. They just have to be relative vertexes, vertices once they're aligned together. And that's how you form your similarity postulate. And with this given here, uh, and with um, certain given ratios, I can develop my similarity diagram without looking back to this diagram um, entirely. All right, everyone, that'll be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I had a pleasure making this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe down below and of course, turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of her channel's latest uploads. 
please visit our website at www.equacademy.org. Um, there we have full unlocked access to what we as an e-learning platform actually offer. We have integrated quizzes, note sheets, and worksheets that go along with each and every one of our videos organized into separate lessons, of course, under organized course studies as well. There we have um, extra tips and perks as well as uh, organized events there um, that are basically a bonus to what we actually provide on our social media and YouTube platforms. Also, we have contact information on our website available completely. But we, you, if you don't, if you haven't already visited our website, please make sure to email us at equacademy at gmail.com if you have any questions, if you just want to reach out to us. And finally, uh, please make sure to check all of our socials in the description box below. We have a full link down there at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Chuck us a follow out there, hit the follow button. Um, also see what kind of interesting content we have there aside from our YouTube channel and our, our website. And of course, use our mediums to use those mediums to share all of our videos. Once again, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed. This has been AJ and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.